music. The astronauts on board the International Space Station, a dozen of them in all, have been up for hours already. They're in the middle of a busy day. They're about to hold a news conference in a little less than 30 minutes. Uh, they're going to talk about the week-long shuttle resupply mission to the station, a successful mission. I'll be a little busy, but if I had a chance to pose them a question, I would ask them how they think NASA can help stem the tide on the STEM problem. And by that, I'm referring to science, technology, engineering, and math ah, education. An acronym. Yeah, STEM. Yes. Well, it's NASA. Yeah. you got to use the acronym, <laughs> right, right? Of course. American 15-year-olds now rank 21st in science, 25th in math when compared to their peers around the world. 21st in science, 25th in math. How did that happen? President Obama tackled the issue yesterday at the White House. This isn't news. We've seen worrying statistics like this for years. Yet, time and again, we've let partisan and petty bickering stand in the way of progress. And time and again, as a nation, we've let our children down. We can't keep doing that. In the audience for that event, lots of high school kids, the Secretaries of Education and Energy, Sally Ride was there, and the NASA Administrator, Charlie Bolden, former astronaut, Marine fighter pilot, the son of two educators. And some full disclosure here, I'm on the NASA Advisory Council, heading the Committee on Education and Public Outreach, so I might have a little bit of a conflict of interest here. Good morning, Charlie. Good to have you with us. Good morning, Miles. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Um, what can NASA do to inspire and engage kids and get them excited about science? As, as the President said, let's make science cool again. Well, our primary intent is to, to expose them to the opportunities that are available in math and science uh, and engineering, help them understand exactly what engineering means, you know, what is it, because we, we throw the term around, but there are a lot of teachers who don't even know what it means to be an engineer. So uh, we have lots of assets in the way of astronauts and spaceships and 10 centers around the country that we, starting this summer, are hoping to to use to expose as many kids as possible to, to the opportunities available in these fields. Yeah, some of this is, is beyond NASA's purview because some of it is the way it is taught in classrooms. But, but it, it, NASA is a great reminder to them that engineering can lead you to great goals. That's correct. And, you know, um, just by being in communities the way that, that we are attempting to be, by, by allowing astronauts to go into schools where uh, they would not otherwise see someone who has attained that particular height in life, um, that opens new doors to kids that, that never imagined they could do that before. All right, well, Char ahead. Charlie, I mean, with the, all the budgetary restrictions at NASA and the frustrations over the last uh, 10 to 15 years, is NASA a great place for an engineer to have a career these days? NASA is a fantastic place for engineers to have have a place to work. In fact, uh, I think in the latest poll of, of best places to work in the country, uh, NASA is either number one or number two as a general rule, uh, unless you're working in Washington. But uh, but the NASA centers are great places to work. We have tremendous programs for uh, college interns and co-ops. And, uh, in fact, the secretary for the present crew, uh, STS-129, I was listening to her do an interview yesterday. She came to the NASA family as a high school co-op and found that it was something that would allow her to c contribute to the space program. And she's just as important as, a, as an astronaut on the shuttle. All right. Well, help us out. You know, John and I are here. We, we grew up in the generation, and you were there, too, where we watched the space race unfold. You know, the, the sister Grace Edwards would roll the TV in, and we watched the launches. We were all engaged because it was so much a part of our lives. How do we recreate that? Well, you know, Miles, as you and I have talked in the past, we need, again, we need to get out on the street. We need to pound the pavement and help kids understand, not just kids, help kids and their parents uh, understand what we're trying to do now. We're involved in an incredible, and I won't call it a race, but we're involved in an incredible contest uh, for technological leadership in the world. And the only way we can maintain that leadership is by continuing to do the types of engineering development and innovation that uh, NASA and the nation have always been known for. Charles, so Charles, what we intend to do. Charles, I, I need to disclose something. Miles disclosed that he's uh, you know, on, on the commission, right? right? Yeah. The yeah. Advisory commission. I was one of the um, journalist in space candidates. Um, any chance I could redeem that for a ride? Well, you never know, John. Uh, you know, we only have a few flights left in 2010, but but there will be other vehicles. So that the 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 message for people is that uh, going into space does not end when when the shuttle is phased out. We're we're hoping to develop another vehicle. We're going to be dependent on the Russians and and other international partners for a while. But uh, NASA engineers right now are, are busily working to try to develop a follow-on for shuttle. All right. Well, let's talk about that for just a minute because we're talking about a five, maybe seven-year gap there when the shuttle retires. Um, probably 2011 now, uh, mm -hmm. to whenever this next vehicle comes along. That's it. What, what do you do to keep kids engaged, keep them excited about being a part of this whole science and engineering campaign during that period? 
Well, Miles, we'll still have astronauts who are going, venturing into space and will be there 365 days a year, uh, American astronauts. Uh, it, will be, uh, it will be not unlike the period of time between 1975 when we flew the last Apollo mission and Apollo Soyuz and 1981 when we launched shuttle. Uh, during that period of time, we had no flights. We had no, no, no Americans going into space. Our, our Soviet back then counterparts were. But uh, so we're going to go through a period of time where we don't have a, a an American organic capability to get to space, but we have uh, scheduled seats on Soyuz where we're going to have American astronauts going into space 365 days over the next five All years. Right. So well, ma marching, uh, kids can do that. Charlie, marching forward, what is NASA's mission? Is it to go to a planet or is it to inspire kids and, and have them uh, take up these uh, professions of engineering and mathematics and science? My number one goal, Miles, I, I, I learned something, and that is you can't inspire someone if they haven't been exposed to it. So, uh, again, as, as you've heard us talk about on the NASA Advisory Council, we want to find ways to get NASA engineers, uh, NASA astronauts out into schools, into communities, so that we can let kids know that there are opportunities there. Once we do that, then we can inspire them. But we've got to expose them to what's available. We've got to expose them to airplanes and to, to drones or un, un, you know, unmanned aerial vehicles. Uh, rockets, things like that. So that, that's our that's Mars our rovers the coming years. Yeah. All right, Charlie Bolden, NASA Administrator. Thanks for your time this morning. Miles, thanks so very much to you and John. Take care.